This man is serving a huh. life sentence for murder. This is I'm the. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm body conscious, as you can see. I've gained a few pounds. So this video, it's from um, Insider News. Um, prisoners in Finland live in open prisons where they learn tech skills. The description says, Many inmates in Finland live in open prisons, quote-unquote, where they are allowed to own a vehicle, leave for work or school, and host overnight guests. Now, the country is funding educational programs where prisoners learn technology skills like artificial intelligence. Dip in the frozen lake behind the prison is part of his regular workout routine. No problem. It's okay. Oh. Okay, your turn. <laughs> Welcome to life in one of Finland's open prisons. There are no cell blocks here, just dormitories. Inmates come and go in their own cars. When Matty isn't at the nearby university campus, he's in his dorm room, studying for a career in tech. Some entrepreneurship books, marketing books, user experience, all kinds of uh, digital and uh, IT studies. And we have this kind of normality principle that prisoners should be treated equally, even though they are prisoners, but they should have access to same services and rights as, as other citizens. In recent years, Finland has been named the happiest and safest country in the world. Citizens here enjoy generous public benefits, universal health care, subsidized daycare for children, and free college tuition. Promotional films like this, produced by Finland's Criminal Sanctions Agency, document how prisoners are eased back into society with work opportunities and help from counselors. And the incarceration rate here is one of the lowest in Europe, a quarter of what it was in 1950. In Finland, only one in three former convicts ends up back in prison. Compare that to the United States, where two out of three get locked up again within two years of release. Right. A 2018 bill included sentencing reforms meant to reduce what is referred to as recidivism. But they only apply to inmates in federal custody. Yeah, it's just 10% of the 2.3 million people incarcerated in the US. Critics say the 2018 reforms are only a small first step and fall far short of the kind of meaningful change Finland is so proud of. The scale, of course, is different. Today, there are fewer than 3,000 in the Finnish prison system. The number of people behind bars in the U.S. <laughs> is equal to more. half of Finland's total population. Uh, Jesus Christ. A reimagining of what prison looks like here started nearly 70 years ago, when this Scandinavian nation began building one of the most humane systems in the world. In some of the latest steps, Finland's Criminal Sanctions Agency is investing heavily in technology training. The first topic is, uh, what is AI? Uh, then the second topic, problem solving with AI. And building a state-of-the-art smart prison for women. And even testing VR to provide an escape from the drab walls and fluorescent lighting of Turku, Finland's highest security closed prison. Mika, who is 10 years into a 15-year sentence, <laughs> is walking through a 3D forest. He appreciates the chance to interact with VR technology and learn the basics of working with computers. We try to uh, educate the prisoners to use digital services in a meaningful way so that it would really help them to rehabilitate and help them to take care of themselves and take care of their daily affairs and the kind of things, the kind of skills that you need when you reintegrate back to society. Now Finland is investing in the infrastructure to support that readjustment. A 34 million euro prison that many hope will set the standard for the future. 
No bars, glass windows, an internet connection in every room, and small touches meant for comfort. This is the, our speciality, is the bar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> When it opens in this fall, the brand new facility in Hamindlina is expected to be Europe's most high-tech women's prison. But just across the road, a reminder of the past. The old facility, built in 1972, once housed both men and women. It shut down in 2019 after years of disrepair, mould mm. and other reasons. This was before a toilet. And where did they empty it? I take this and there. Oh, and the there's sink. Jesus there. Christ. I'm sure. And just a few minutes drive away, a relic built in the 19th century and modelled on the American style of prison that is still widely in use today. Cell blocks arranged in a radial floor plan, prisoners living in solitary confinement. This one is a museum now, preserved to show just how hard prison life here used to be. Agreed, MR Ed. The road to reform has led him to a career that he would never have dreamed of before. Prenti is uh, one of the connected with Reactor, a digital agency most that impressive online socialist voices going courses. When they heard he was participating in this story, they invited him to give some feedback on the program. Um, Eager to hear, like, what did you think about the first course? What did you see? What was your general impression about it? It was shown quite simply what is AI, what isn't AI. Right. So that was that was really good, and uh, kind of like show that it's not about magic. Seeing him in this meeting, it's easy to forget that Matty is still serving out his sentence for murder. In that time, he hopes to complete a university degree and start a business. One way to get kind of like employed is of course self-employment so mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of prisoners have already the entrepreneurial mindset <laughs> based on matty's recommendations reactor is planning to add an entrepreneurship course to the prison curriculum it has like enforced my trust in also like this first prison system where, where like giving chances to put people like you like yeah. it's, it's it's awesome after the meeting matty heads back to loka prison but he is excited for the future. At the beginning of my sentence, I, I thought that this is there, there can only be negative things in being in prison, that basically life is over. But I think you should give people a chance. That's the most important thing. Yeah, there you go, Fia. Um, you know, so I have, uh, uh, I'm sure no surprise, I have a few thoughts. Um, I mean, first and foremost, it just seems like um, so incredibly obvious that if you're going to, if a person is going to do prove that they can't function within a society and then as, as a direct result of their inability to function in it, pose a threat to that society, society clearly they have to be removed from it. But what do you do then, right? Well, in America, we go, okay, well, we're going to spank you. And this judge is going to determine for how many years we would just perpetually spank the shit out of you. Okay. You know, you could um, remove them from society because they've clearly shown a posed a threat, shown themselves to be a threat to society. And then in earnest, tackle the things that um, cause them to do that, to cause them to do the things that... Um, made them lash out in inappropriate and harmful ways. And then um, <laughs> you want to provide them with the skills that will be necessary so that one, um, once you address the, you know, their emotional or mental or whatever it is that led to that crime and the nature of it and help them understand why they committed that thing, um, you also want to give them the skills they need to go back into society and function properly. Right? And that's where the education and all that stuff comes in. It just makes sense to me. And that will lower the recidivism rate and all the statistics they showed you bear that out to be true. That if you teach them skills 
with which to re-enter society, there's a significantly less chance that they'll reoffend and return to prison as opposed to America, where it's almost guaranteed that people will be put, because they're returning to the same conditions with which they ended up offending before. Now, in America, the vast majority of people in prisons did not hurt anyone and did not show themselves to be any type of threat to society, okay? Um, you know, drug offenses and whatever. And more often than not, just being poor and accepting a plea bargain, maybe when they didn't even do anything, right? because they can't afford an attorney to take it all the way to trial and all the expenses of thousands and thousands of dollars to fight a, you know, felony charges and stuff like that. But if you roll it back a little, you know, you know, this idea of giving them this excellent education that makes them come out and what? Then they can get a good job and make good money. Well, I can hear all kinds of Americans going, well, I'm not guaranteed all that. And so what? All I got to do is go commit a crime, prove myself that I'm, you know, a threat to society and then I'll get this great education, right? Well, that gets to the nature of what everyone in BLM or anti-fascist or what people have just been saying for decades, if not since the inception of this country, if we want to get real about it, but that we need a complete systemic overhaul, right? Because you, me, and the detractors of this Finnish model of prisons should all have had, from the gate, access to a fantastic fucking education. We should have been given the skills necessary to be functioning members of society. If we can acknowledge that we can um, teach these people those skills and provide them for them as adults when they're, you know, after they've committed some type of crime and then they can reacclimate themselves into society, then why can't we just teach them these skills from the start? Like that's the fucking problem with our society from the beginning because this society and our education system is not set up for us to um, transcend our, you know, status quo stations in life, right? There is no upward mobility. We are purposefully kept ignorant, poor, and um, malleable and oppressible by a few thousand successful capitalists. Like, why should information only be um, made accessible to a few people? Like, why should there be a, a monetary price on information? Is, do, do the people who um, work at a university or own a university... Did they create all that information that they have stored in their universities? That they pay teachers to um, disseminate that information to the people who can afford it? It's, it's fucking ridiculous, fam. We all have a goddamn right to um, access to all the information that's out there. If we come out the gate with that and then taught, you know, from a very early age, the proper skills with which to dissect information, we don't even know, like... You could hand, uh, you know, a mass of people right now a bunch of information and, you know, you hand someone the history of Western philosophy. If they don't have the base level skills with which to sort of know how to properly dissect that and ingest it, it's not going to make any sense to them, right? And I know this, comes, you know, this is a, you know, socialist anarchist saying that we need to teach people how to think, <laughs> which should scare the shit out of right wingers, right? Because that's re-education camps. But it's, Teaching you how to think for yourself, filter through bullshit, and process really complex information. I am of the impression that the vast majority of people out there that are seemingly really fucking stupid and dangerously fucking so, COVIDians, magheads, I believe a lot of them have the potential to be, to uh, manifest real high levels of intelligence. They just have not been provided any of the base level skills with which to learn. So then, you know, we know that um, when you learn things, um, new synapses are created in your brain that make it possible for you to learn more. Like you get literally your brain works better and you get smarter the more you know. You're not just smarter because you know more stuff. Like, boop, 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 like all this shit starts firing off in your brain that makes it makes you capable of ingesting information at a new level with which you were not priorly uh, capable. Right? Does that make sense? Um, learning makes you even better at learning. But if you aren't taught base skills at the beginning of life and taught the value of learning, you're not going to continue to progress that way, right? And that's, so again, it's just an, uh, aside from having to get rid of capitalism, the reason we don't have all this stuff here is because it's not fucking monetizable. You have to have um, a price set on. 
Otherwise, what's the value, right? Like a Harvard or Yale education must be really good because it has a really fucking high price set on it. Well, and that's not to disparage a Harvard or Yale education, but I love to love Harvard or Yale education. Yeah, no shit. It'd be so cool. I mean, it's, it's not conceivable. You're 15. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna ever have the finances to, to get there. You know, um, but that's to keep people out of prison to begin with, right? Like, people aren't fundamentally evil. And if a person is, whatever the fuck that means, they're born fundamentally evil, we need to spot that. We need to separate them from society. And listen, it's not their fault. If they're born fucked up and fundamentally evil and dangerous, it's not a choice that they made. It's not something that can be fixed, and so you can't punish it away. So you need to... We as a society have the resources and the... And the um, wherewithal and the knowledge and the technology to give them a comfortable life with which do, they um, can't be put in a position to cause a threat to other people. This is so fucking fundamentally goddamn easy, man. The we achieved thus far was accomplished on collectivized power, but it's an angel scheme to deceive us all that those capitalists won't ever fall. That's a lie. Get up and fight. Every human being has a right to fight for their own fucking page in history. Politicians talking heads and celebrities don't own a monopoly on history. The process of advancing philosophy is only for those who can afford to feed. That's a lie. Get up and fight. Every human being has a right to fight for their own fucking page in history. One world. And we're all fucking living on it. A slave herd is how the boss has always fucking wanted it. One world. And yeah, I'm fucking living on it. But the slave herd, I never asked to be a fucking part of it. so? And that social fucking contract? Yeah, fuck that. Revolution's what I'm fucking dead at. Getting so erratic is a human disposition. Rich and poor alike have a right to that shit. Tearing apart the status quo is a long tradition from thinking about the people all over the planet. Every fucking word of movement understands things Crawling on pages and is waiting for you Arrested, ingested, know what's really true And minimize their stranglehold Hold on you, there's a centuries old Hierarchical scheme that grinds down hard On your dignity Feverishly feeding us complacency As the only way to ever be free That's a lie Get up and fight Every human being has a right to fight for their own fucking page in history. One world, and we're all fucking living on it. A slave herd is how the boss has always fucking wanted it. One world, and yeah, I'm fucking living on it. But the slave herd, I never asked to be a fucking part of it. Rousseau, and that social fucking contract, yeah, fuck that. Revolutions, what I'm fucking getting at. All that we've achieved thus far was accomplished on collectivized power, but it's an angel scheme to deceive us all that those capitalists won't ever fall. Politicians, talking heads, and celebrities don't own a monopoly on history. The process of advancing philosophy is only for those who can afford to feed. That's a lie. Get up and fight. Every human being has a right to fight for their own fucking page in history. Getting so erratic is a human disposition. Rich and poor alike have a right to that shit. Tearing apart the status quo is a long tradition from thinking fucking people all over the planet. One world. And we're all fucking living on it. A slave herd is how the fuck has always fucking wanted it. One world. And yeah, I'm fucking living on it. But the slave herd, I never asked to be a fucking part of it. So, 
And that social fucking contract Yeah, fuck that Revolutions where I'm fucking getting at Your life, your life Take it and do with it what you can But revolutions what I'm fucking getting at